Well, we have tied a record for no activity in the Atlantic Basin from the end of August into mid-September, but with tonight's forecast feed, we're looking at Gabrielle, the new tropical storm. How will the factors at play influence this storm strengthening, and where will it go? Will it impact the East Coast? Are we looking at coastal erosion? Uh, and we'll look at the uh, future of this one. Uh, but first, briefly, just a quick look at the recent record uh, that has been broken across uh, much of the uh, Atlantic Basin here. Uh, we're dealing with what has been uh, a pretty remarkable stretch in that uh, we didn't have any named storms from the 29th of August through the 16th. That was yesterday. Today, we're back in business now with Gabrielle. And uh, the only other time in the satellite era with no storms during this time frame was 1992. You got to go back to 1950 through the present time. And the only other year with no activity from the 29th uh, to through the 16th was 1992. And it just so happens that uh, the final day of Andrew's life matched up with the final day of Tropical Storm Fernand's life, uh, August 28th. So from the 29th through the 16th, nothing. The tropical depression that became Bonnie back in 92 formed on September 17th. And today, uh, Tropical Depression 7 rapidly became a Tropical Storm Gabrielle on the 17th as well. So uh, at this point, uh, we're dealing with a really disheveled storm out here. Gabrielle does not look that impressive. Uh, it is uh, lopsided. There are kind of two disembodied zones of convection, one to the north, one to the south. And there has been some, some dry out there, uh, dry air out there on the northwest side of the storm certainly inhibiting it uh, in some form. Uh, this is the uh, water vapor loop and the x-ray of the atmosphere. You can see a lot of oranges and yellows here northwest of the center of the storm. Uh, but there's also a tendency for the dry air to give way to this uh, more aggressive charge of moisture beginning to take over and replace that dry patch. So unlike other tropical waves that faltered and failed over the past three weeks, this one is uh, a, a named entity, a tropical storm that's moving into uh, some recent recently dry air and replacing that with moisture. Another hurdle for this storm is the abundant wind shear just northwest of its current location. So on the high end of this uh, scale, the deep purple is where we have some strong winds aloft. And when you have winds in conflict with one another, tropical systems are held in check. So we're not going to see this rapidly strengthened by any stretch, but after it gets through a hurdle, uh, over this area of stronger wind shear, we're going to see Gabrielle enter a zone with lower wind shear to the north of the Caribbean uh, into the weekend and early next week. But we want to switch over to kind of the computer models here. So uh, as we bring up uh, the, the future of this storm and, and some of the tools we look at when we're forecasting the weather, we can look at that um, uh, storm uh, aloft first with the, this is the GFS, one of the American models. And uh, when I'm spinning this forward here, uh, you can see this, this closed contour. That is the center of the storm as the computer model resolves it. Uh, and this is uh, looking at, uh, again, tomorrow. Uh, and as we move forward in time, you can see it's not going to strengthen a whole lot because of that wind shear that is going to cross. But eventually, we get into a position here where the uh, storm will be uh, farther west, passing north of the Caribbean. Here we are. And this uh, time frame here would be uh, on the 23rd. This would be uh, late Monday night into early Tuesday of next week. So there's going to be some time. By the way, this won't be too far from Bermuda. There's a little dot on the map uh, known as Bermuda. This particular model takes it near or right over Bermuda. And then you can see it gets scooped up. Uh, there is a big trough off the east coast of the U.S. and it will likely scoop it up and sh shoot it off to the east. Uh, there may be some residual circulation. There's a chance that it could be left behind missing that uh, that uh, trough. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Uh, and when we look at computer models, sometimes there's a way to bring up different types of models, including ensembles. This is uh, the same model physics, but you tweak the initial conditions a little bit and run the model out many different times. And you can see there's the center of our storm, that circle, uh, just to the northeast of the Caribbean, uh, Thursday night, Friday morning. But as we go forward in time, we begin to see more disagreement among these different uh, model uh, ensemble members. And you can see that there are many different smaller scale circles out there. These would be different ensemble members, uh, the location of the center of the storm. You'll notice that none of them really bring it into the East Coast. There's a lot of variety out there, uh, and then it just kind of goes into chaos into the future. But we're confident it will not impact the East Coast directly because look at this wall of strong winds, the steering winds aloft. This is way up there, around 30,000 feet up where uh, 747 would fly. Strong winds, and there's no real um, break in this. Uh, strong winds uh, off the East Coast as a, a trough reinforces that. 
And that's going to give us high confidence that we're not going to be dealing with a storm for the east coast of the U.S. So again, our AccuWeather eye path for this storm is going to take it out to sea, keeping it offshore. But we do need to keep an eye out for Bermuda. Uh, so that's going to be the area of concern, at least for this one, uh, in the next few days. And uh, later this week, we'll take a look at the next tropical wave behind that. Could that one impact the Caribbean or the east coast maybe near the end of the month? We'll answer that question in the days to come.